Disney is facing some tough times ahead, but there is a way that it can be saved. Hey guys, it's Greg. And first we need to diagnose the Disney disease before we can talk about a cure. So Disney stock is hovering around its lowest point in almost seven years, barring that thing that happened in March of 2020. I was murdered. You were murdered. But on the surface, things seem to be going really well. Disney Plus subscriptions are way up, the parks are packed, and the MCU is dominating every opening weekend. So what's got investors? Are so nervous. Well, quite a lot as we're going to see, and later in the video we'll discuss how Disney is trying, ineffectively, to fix those problems. Disney is currently the second highest streaming provider beside Netflix, and it raced to silver in only three years. Those huge numbers are a little bit misleading, however, because the subscriber count comes from three categories. There's Disney Plus America, International, and Hotstar. If you've never heard of Hotstar, probably because you don't live in India. In 2018, Disney acquired 21st Century Fox, and that deal came with India's biggest streaming provider, Hotstar. After the Disney Plus launch, it was rebranded to Disney Plus Hotstar. Currently, it makes up a third of Disney's very impressive subscriber count. The problem is, not all subscriptions are the same, and Hotstar is netting Disney less than a dollar per sub. Globally, Disney is averaging less than $4 per subscriber, while a service like Netflix is making over $11. Oh, you know what? Speaking of subscribers, now it feels like kind of a natural point in the video to ask you to hit the like button. It helps the channel a lot, and I deeply appreciate it. Disney park attendance surged in 2022, but again, this doesn't indicate a healthy company. Many people were just making up for lost time after the events of 2020 and 21, and now we've got high inflation and this looming possible recession. One big problem for Disney as a business is that it is fueled almost exclusively by discretionary spending. If we're being honest, Disney doesn't make anything that you or I actually need. And as things get difficult economically, people will make less budgetary room for their product. In fact, Disney is already seeing a drop off for their new Star Wars feature, the uh, Galactic Cruiser, I think it's called. That really super expensive one, it's like $6,000 for two nights. Shockingly, not enough people want to go there. This is a really good reminder that if you don't like the products that Disney or any company makes, you can cut them off. If you feel that they're too woke or they're exposing children to sexualized content or whatever your gripe with the company is, you can drop them anytime. A company like Disney needs you exponentially more than you need them. Try taking a month off from Disney or any subscription service that you have. I think you'll be surprised with how much you find you don't need them. Finally, the big box office results are again only telling half the tale. And don't get me wrong, opening weekend for MCU films are massive. The recent Black Panther Wakanda Forever actually set a couple of records. First, they had the highest gross for their weekend, which was enormous. And then again for holding the top spot five weekends in a row. Despite these impressive feats, the film is looking to land worldwide at a paltry $800 million. <laughs> Not even worth getting out of bed for, am I right, guys? Now, supposedly conventional wisdom says they needed about five to $600 million to start breaking even, so they've made about two to $300 million in profit, and that sounds huge, but for a company like Disney, it's just not enough. It's not making up for the losses from movies like Strange World and Lightyear. Wakanda was only able to stay on top because there was really no competition. All of the MCU films are falling off a cliff second weekend and beyond. Also, the reviewers' knees must be getting tired because the groveling and genuflecting is getting less and less enthusiastic with each new film. Fact is, the movie quality just isn't great, and the longer this goes on, the more bad PR they're garnering, and it makes it harder for them to dig their way out of this hole. Look, people are very vocal about Disney's upfront gay content, the MCU, and the terrible handling of the Star Wars franchise. What's more worrisome are the people who are just silently walking away. And Disney needs that audience because, bonus problem, they are drowning in debt. Almost $50 billion of it, to be precise. Billion with a B. That's a loud! That's a lot of money! This particular debt snowball has been growing for years now in a decidedly anti-Dave Ramsey fashion and it was only exacerbated by the old Demic. And so it's kind of doom and gloom, but Disney's a big company with experienced leadership. So what are they trying to do to solve these problems? This is where I feel kind of bad for the company because they're in a pretty tough spot. Disney seems to be engaging in the same desperate attempt to stay afloat as many dying companies, 
cashing in now at the expense of later. Unconfirmed insider reports state that Disney funneled marketing money away from Lightyear and Strange World to go to the massive marketing budget for Wakanda Forever. Take that with a mountain of salt, but it seems to line up with how things actually played out. After Strange World flopped, many people responded with, wait, what flop now? I I've never heard of that movie. It definitely feels like Disney is going for the quick big bag with the Marvel CGI universe and Star Wars nostalgia at the expense of smaller, less famous projects. Now this might be changing. Rumors inside the company suggest that Marvel phases five and six are gonna undergo some serious changes based on how poorly phase four went. I made a video predicting some of that. Watch that one after this one. The rumors are that Disney wants to prioritize quality over quantity. Holy shit, what a concept. Do I have coffee in my glasses? No, that's gonna bug me. Coffee in my glasses. Better. Another rumor has Kathleen Kennedy, who oversaw the disastrous Star Wars sequel trilogy, leaving Lucasfilm by the end of 2023. Is it possible Disney sees that lazy cash grabs aren't working? Don't be ridiculous. In addition to trying to just make more money, they're also trying to be responsible and cut costs, but this again might be hurting them in the long run. If anecdotal reports are to be believed, the park experience just isn't as magical as it was before the 19. More quantitatively, the park street shows and random character appearances have been reduced. Another big complaint for the last two years has been the quality of the food. Disney food has always been pretty standout as far as theme parks go, and customers have lately been reporting a marked decrease in quality. This is backed up by the CFO, who you may recall being in hot water last year for suggesting that cutting back on food portions was not only good for cutting costs, but it would also help for the customer's waistlines. Listen, if I'm in Orlando, I'm not dieting, fuck you very much. Cost cutting isn't limited to just the parks. It was recently reported the CFO also brought in the McKinsey Group to help work out a cost-saving strategy. If you've ever worked in a corporate environment, you know the McKinsey Group is spoken of in hushed tones and fearful whispers. They're well known for their slash and burn tactics to bring company budgets in line. Disney fans should expect this for some time because the rumor is the CFO is in the short list to replace new old CEO Bob Iger when he leaves in two years. Finally, what the conservatives have been hoping for may be coming to pass. Disney seems to be pulling back on the woke yoke, but it might be too ingrained in the company at this point. Look, honestly, we all know that most companies are just marketing to the social justice warriors. Uh, sir, it's almost June. What should we do for the gays? Oh, right, June. Uh, just change our logo to rainbow colors or some shit. That seems to make them happy. Terms and conditions apply not available in the following regions. Now, credit where it's due, Disney is walking the walk. It's the last mile, but hey, they are walking it. In a previous video, we covered the possible reasons for ousting former CEO Bob Chapek, Besides the obvious financial problems, it's speculated that he might have been the scapegoat, scape woke, for the company's political troubles. The problem is, Disney really did go in for the social progressives, and turning the culture around in a company that size is extremely difficult, if not impossible. Even if they can do it, it's not gonna happen overnight, and investors might not have the patience to wait it out. So things are looking a little bleak for the House of Mouse, but there is hope. Tune in next time where I will detail how Disney can right the ship and return to former glory. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.